Welcome to our lecture online. So here we're trying to envision in a slightly different way what we really mean by the curvature of space. And before we take a look at the drawing here on the right, let's take a look at the drawing on the left. So what we've done here is drawn a charged object. Let's say it's positively charged. And so we know there's going to be an electric field around the charge. And these lines emanating away from the charge are representative of the electric field. That's how we simply draw the electric field. And the strength of the field is proportional to the distance between the lines. If they're closer together, then the field is stronger. If they're farther apart, then the field is weaker. So you can see that the farther out you go, the farther the lines are apart, the weaker the electric field. The closer you get, the closer the lines are together, the stronger the field. So that's the way in which there's a relationship between the electric field around the charged object and the charge object. And sure, there's some relationship between how space reacts to the presence of charges. But here we have a kind of a different field called the gravitational field. But what is it? Again, it's the curvature of space. And what we try to present here is that the little circles with the dashed lines are representative of the strength of the field. When the lines are closer together, the field is stronger. When the lines are farther apart, the field is weaker. Another way of looking at it is, the closer you get to the sun, the more space is curved. The farther you get away from the sun, the less space is curved. So let's say you have an object like a rogue moon or maybe an asteroid or, or a comet or something like that, that happens to be traveling towards the sun, but it gets a little bit too close and the curvature space gets to be too strong. Now, if you stay perfectly on one of those lines, then you are what we call an equipotential line. With other words, you will not fall into the sun. You'll simply keep going around and around along that curvature of space. And so that's why planets and moons remain in orbit. But if for some reason something gets a little bit too close at an angle, cutting across those lines, notice that the force of attraction towards the sun, one that we could physically measure if we had a scale, is affected because of the curvature of space. The more space is curved, the stronger the force pulling the object in. And as the object gets closer and closer to the sun, you can see that the force towards the sun gets stronger and stronger, and the object will simply get pulled into the sun. Comets, once in a while, will actually go right into the sun. We call those kamikaze uh, asteroids or comets because they just plunge right into the sun, of course, never to be seen again. And simply the reason why they do that is because the curvature of space simply pulls them in. The force gets larger and larger as you get closer and space curves more and more. And any object that's not on a nearly circular path will indeed collide with the sun. And of course that happens with black holes or any other objects that are very large that create a very large curvature around them. Any object that's on a collision course with that object, even on a glancing blow of course, they will eventually simply get pulled in and collide with the sun. If they're lucky enough, then of course if they're enough at an angle, they might come in around and then go back out and they may do that for a while until they're kind of curved out their path into the direction of the curvature of space. So, these last, this, this video right here and the video before gives you kind of a three-dimensional feel of how space is curved. Again, don't think of this as a two-dimensional region, think of this as a spherical region, and the closer you get from any direction, the more space is curved. And that's kind of the difficult part to envision. If you envision it to be three-dimensional, how does space curve? How does that really happen? What does that look like? And so that's why we start talking about the four-dimensional curve. It is into a means of curvature that is very hard for us to actually envision. It's very difficult to kind of envision how that curvature would act because it is indeed a three-dimensional environment. So if you think of a three-dimension as you get closer to the sun, the curvature gets stronger and stronger. It's kind of hard to envision that. And that's why the relationship from a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional world is really the way to go. So if you imagine that the curvature of space is like this, like kind of like a funnel, like the kind of the funnel that you see at a museum. Notice that if you had a two-dimensional universe and then the gravitational force would then be depicted as a warping of space from a two-dimensional flat universe into a three third dimensional universe like this. If you think of the third dimension being the curvature of the two-dimensional universe, it's easier to envision. But then if you take a three-dimensional universe and try to figure out some way of how to depict a four-dimensional curvature, 
We're not able to do that because we can't think of what a fourth dimension would look like, especially a spatial fourth dimension. But somehow, we need to be able to grasp that concept because that's really what appears to be going on. Something is happening around the sun that causes space to curve so that things will fall into that curvature. What it looks like, we don't know, but we can indeed see the effects. And for the next several videos, we're going to show you all kinds of different effects that are measurable that are due to this particular curvature. And we'll start out with what happens to Mercury, because it turns out Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, and it is affected by this curvature in a unique way, a way that we can actually measure, and a way that actually explains something that wasn't explainable before, until Einstein came up with the general theory of relativity, which perfectly explains the concept of what happens in that curvature of the Sun. So stay tuned, and we'll show you how that's done. So if that flat two-dimensional space that you have drawn above mm -hmm. the funnel, what if there, were, there was a planet above that two-dimensional space right now, in a three-dimensional setting? So what if there was a planet above it? Well, the, the actual idea about a flat universe, a two-dimensional universe, is that nothing can exist beyond that, right? So everything is within the flat universe. And then when the universe sags and bends into the third dimension, then everything kind of sags in with that third dimension. But everything is stuck within that two-dimensional universe. So it's, it's, it's not a perfect comparison, but it's the only one that we can think of, right? It's if you have a two-dimensional universe and it begins to sag in the third dimension because of gravity, here we have a three-dimensional universe that's sagging into the fourth dimension, something like that. It's hard to imagine. So, the one with the sun and that little blue thing, whatever, an asteroid, whatever, circling around. So that, the sun is actually, in a way, a funnel. Yes, it is this, but coming in from all directions. <laughs> it's, a, it's a funnel. You fall into the funnel from any direction, and that's why it's so hard to envision, but that's exactly it. It's, it's somehow you're, you're falling into this funnel caused by the, the warping of space somehow. Yep. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a three-dimensional funnel, however you want to try to present it in your mind. So if you can think of a way to do that, <laughs> here's, the, here, here's the marker. <laughs> It's a tough thing. It, it's very difficult to try to envision that. But yeah, you, you hit it right on the head. If you think of a, a two-dimensional universe funneling into the third dimension, but now you think of that funnel being in any direction. Yeah, it's kind of it's like that.